Next topic to discuss, pandemic retrospectives, China's role in COVID-19 spread and lessons learned. Findings included that the pandemic may have began in Wuhan, China, while the true origination of COVID-19 is still argued. The 20th century disease, the true origination of COVID-19 is still argued within this 20th century disease, uh, similar to uh, Ebola, MERS, and SARS, which are also argued about their origination and how they started. Um, it could have, you know, been started from bats. It really could have been started from anything. But like these diseases, coronavirus tends to originate in animals and replicate within them, but they can also replicate without a host. Uh, so that's what makes coronavirus so difficult to combat is it doesn't need a host to replicate and be found within the environment and affect you. Coronavirus are ever evolving into newer, more stealthy strains that can infect us even after we fully recover from the other strains. And so humanity can become reinfected more than once and regardless of overcoming other strands of coronavirus, they may be infected by a more deadly strain in the future, regardless of overcoming that past strain of COVID-19. And so maintaining uh, people and wild animals in close quarters is really not a good thing. Uh, social distancing is the best way to combat COVID-19. Prevention is the most effective response to improving your outcomes for COVID-19. Uh, definitely read up on my other articles on medium.com and my YouTube videos posted about these articles. If you want to learn more about COVID-19 pandemics and really enhancing your health so that your outcomes are just way better. Socially distancing is super important. Uh, China is among the most highly populated countries in the world. So some say that the initial outbreak of COVID-19 originated in a wet market where animals were sold for consumption in China. Uh, the wet markets are facilities utilized for trade of wild animals, which are contained in small spaces and close quarters, and usually the cleanliness at these facilities is not so good. And so sanitation is super important at these markets. It needs to be improved and it just simply is not where it should be. Um, the animals are not separated enough. And so when they carry a virus, uh, they often spread from animal to animal and then eventually to humans. And that's how we get pandemics or viruses that impact the human society. Uh, usually they are found originating in animals first and then they become susceptible to humans later. So no one is safe from COVID-19. Uh, the 1918 Spanish flu was so deadly that it overwhelmed even the healthiest as both spreading and killing easily most anyone. And COVID-19 really was the same. Uh, you could be super healthy and infected by COVID-19. Uh, you could be super young, you could be super old, you could be super not young or old and still be affected, infected by COVID-19. So no one is safe from COVID-19. COVID-19 and other coronaviruses infect both healthy and unhealthy people. Uh, it's just some people are just more susceptible for deadlier outcomes and that's why we really need to be careful, especially those with um, pre-existing conditions like cancer, heart disease, stroke, or other issues. These conditions, um, kidney issues, they can really enhance your statistics for deadly outcomes and so you definitely want to seek uh, hospitalization and a doctor as soon as possible if you have COVID and a contributing condition related to heart, stroke, cancer, kidneys. So we definitely want to stay resilient, stay informed, do research, and proactively take action to mitigate impacts and spread of COVID-19 and also any other pandemic. To improve global effectiveness against pandemics like COVID-19, especially our worldwide governments and organizations um, should definitely consider the lessons learned from China's history, U.S. history, global history, 
and really analyze like our proactive actions for this pandemic and really improve them in the next one because they really were insufficient. We should do more. We should do more in prevention, especially do more in uh, response, do those simple things that we can do, socially distance, shower twice a day, uh, wear a mask, stuff like that. Work from remote, work remotely, work remotely. So improving living conditions and hygiene is super important. If we improve our global living conditions and hygiene, the spread of infectious diseases will be prevented. Definitely check out my other YouTube videos to learn more about viral load for diseases. So in my articles on medium.com and my content on YouTube, uh, I definitely explain viral load and how different diseases will really overwhelm your body. And so it's important to reduce the viral load of throughout your body. And you could do this by fostering improved hygiene. And definitely do this by socially distancing yourself with those that have severe or even any um, symptoms at all. If you're going to get COVID-19, it's better to become exposed to a lesser load of the virus. We can both prevent the spread of disease, but also prevent systematic deathly outcomes within our own body. We can do more, we can take action, we can take control of situations, at least to some extent. Humanity globally should strive to improve access to clean water, adequate sanitation facilities, sanitation cleaning products, as well as hygiene products and facilities. Like, for example, I went to uh, Hungary and their swimming pool bath spas that are open to the public have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of people, probably thousands of people in these pools. And literally you walk around and you just see mold everywhere, black mold, white mold, all the different molds. <laughs> so um, these societies are super modern, super developed. And then you're walking around the pool areas with so much black mold, white mold, all the molds, the worst molds, super, you know, health issue, like that place would be shut down if it was in the US. And I really think that all the developed countries in the world need to do more. And so sanitation is super important. Uh, mold is super bad for you. And definitely in focus on hygiene, um, internationally, we need to do more. And even in your own home, there's so much more you can do. You could, you know, just buy some soap, take more showers, um, you know, do your best. I mean, everyone's circumstances are different, but I think knowledge is key. Be informed, do your research, and just do what you can in the situation that you are provided. But overall, the countries all around the world all need to do better. The fact that you're finding a developed country with black mold everywhere in their pool systems and thousands of people, as if the quantity of people in a pool is just not regulated. Um, there's just so much more that our regulations can cover and sanitization, sanitizing regulations, laws for human safety and health are, really need to be enhanced all over the world. But also in the US, believe it or not. So globally, humanity must share information and research more to foster improved actions by all individuals to include uninformed uh, developing nations who may not have these regulations, they may not have these resources, but at least if you're informed, you can do your best with the information that you have. And I feel like you're just set up for success. It's a leadership 101. Informed people will more effectively take actions and do better in life. Be informed, <laughs> do your research, vet the research that you have, and just take actions to foster an improved and better life. If you want to level up, definitely subscribe below because we're going to talk about literally everything that really affects your life and how to really foster an improved life, not just for you, but everyone around you. And so <laughs> definitely subscribe below if you want to check out more articles from medium.com that I've written and, and shift it over to my YouTube channel. So information sharing is important. Humanity can improve hygiene practices and improve living conditions more with local codes, standards, regulations, laws, but also through practices. And how do we improve practices? By being informed and actually taking actions to wear a mask or shower daily, wash your hands, clean off your food in the sink before you eat it, uh, stuff like that. <laughs>
simple, seemingly simple stuff like that. So education campaigns and community outreach programs are super important. Uh, they're definitely important toward effectively fostering global changes. And we definitely need systematic changes in our lifestyles, regardless of where we live. And we need support and enforcement and monitoring actions by our governments and by our country. So our governments should protect us. They should foster an improved health and safety. I mean, why else do we pay taxes, right? Viruses are spread asymptomatically as well. And so viruses um, can be spread from individual to individual, even if you don't see symptoms yet. It's important to quarantine. It's important to wear masks, socially distance yourself to others, regardless of whether you're experiencing symptoms and not, or not. Control population des density. It's definitely important to control population density in airports and urban areas. Airports are huge hubs of people around the world and they all come together and spread diseases in a very uncontrollable in a very uncontrollable rapid pace and the reality is we need to really improve our regulations toward controlling social distancing in our airports in order to most effectively control the spread of diseases governments and organizations need to effectively regulate and enforce actions in our airports and also in our urban city areas. The reality is that I went on American Airlines during COVID and literally they filled every single seat on the plane. Socially distancing was literally elaborately implemented at that point, but why does the airline, American Airlines, literally pack us all in like sardines, not caring about our health and safety, just caring about the bottom line of their wallet American Airlines literally packed every seat in COVID-19. There was no social distancing. There were people coughing. There were kids everywhere. It, everyone was exposed to spreading COVID-19. And there was literally more care for their pockets and their money and their wallet than there was care for the health and safety of the customers on board. So when there's a pandemic, there definitely needs to be requirements by the government to ensure that these airlines are packing the planes with social distancing in mind. Um, every other seat should be filled, not every single seat. There's definitely more that can be done, and the same goes with the airport itself. Seats and distancing, important for us to actually implement something. There needs to be a change in our regulations, and we need to monitor them, and airlines need to do a better job. Health and safety is important. The $300 to $1,000 you pay toward going on a flight and then they not caring about your health and safety that whole time it's just ridiculous so we really need to control population density in airports and cities humanity should definitely limit the quantity of people on flights and also other transportation methods in the time of COVID-19 I was flabbergasted by my experience on American Airlines. Um, people are dying from COVID-19 and then the company sold and filled every single seat on the flight. And this is highly unethical because as a company, they cared more about their economic gains than they cared about the customer's lives that they serve. And so instead, companies should only fill every other seat and this action should be implemented by regulation and enforced by governments within times of concern. And honestly, it, you know, there are some really good airlines and there are some really not so good airlines. And the ones that I really like, um, I'm definitely doing a video about this later. So definitely subscribe below. But my favorite ones are Delta and Southwest at the moment. So um, when the CDC and World Health Organization label nations and regions to be within a heightened risk, these regulations should automatically be implemented. And all airlines globally should implement some kind of regulation like this to ensure safer travel and reduce the spread of diseases within times of concern.
The spacing out of seating arrangements in, in public transportation is super important, and it should be required by statute and regulation. Similarly, there should be statutes and regulations that require maximum habitability requirements, habitability requirements for commercial buildings to be reduced by a certain percentage. For example, this would mean by law only a certain quantity of people can enter a local Walmart when there is a heightened risk level. While capacity limits and restrictions on airports, public transportation, commercial buildings do exist in certain countries, they should definitely be implemented more effectively worldwide. But also not just implemented, enforced and monitored worldwide more effectively. This is because, again, prevention is key. Prevention is most important and the best solution toward fostering the best outcomes with COVID-19, but most any infectious disease. Social distancing is most impactful toward improving outcomes. Employments should, employment job employers should stagger work schedules and ensure work desks are not shared. Also, remote work options should be required by law for certain professions because certain professionals do not need to go to an office every day. And honestly, not just that, your company will save a lot of money not having you go to an office every day. And so, you can more effectively work from home than do it and a job should be required to implement that because it's a health and safety issue we should reduce population density in our transportation system in our cities and globally during heightened risk times implement actions proactively even when all the facts are not known it is important that our leaders make informed decisions, but our leaders should not fail to take actions just because they don't have enough information. Like for example, when inaction impacts the life and death of millions of people, it's called the precautionary principle. Uh, when there is a infectious disease out there, we need to take action regardless of whether we have all the facts. And we need to take action quick and effectively and sufficiently. And there is no excuse. You know, you need to take action, do better, even when there are unknowns. We can all do better and we can all do more. And we need to all do something. Precautionary principle means you prevent regardless of the knowns and unknowns. It is important to implement actions proactively, even when all the facts may not be known. Prevent the spread of infectious diseases. Action is super important. Humanity knows simple actions that can save lives. Humanity should be quick to implement these known actions proactively to offset the known risks to health and safety. And proactive actions include implementation of response actions while also enhancing the spread of prevention actions. Prevention is key. We need to take action and do more. Actions should include the distribution of personal protective equipment and medical care supplies, not just to individuals in one country, but every country, uh, regardless of their income and GDP. We should all share these resources. We should all take action to ensure that the countries that are developed have access to these resources as well. Especially today, when modern society has the resources, we have the knowledge, we have the understanding, but people are still combating COVID-19 and reality is we have the technology to fix it. We need to do more and provide the resources to the developed, to the underdeveloped nations that are combating COVID-19 today. Uh, yes, the USA might have lesser infections today, but we have the knowledge and the know-how to help those who are getting impacted today. Why is the world not doing enough? We should scale and grow medical care facilities and resources nationwide, increase data reporting, increase data tracking, and increase data monitoring of trends, and increase enforcement actions. The reality is certain countries have lesser data. They seem like they're not being impacted, but the reality is they're impacted a lot. And the reality is we're just not collecting the data, so it, everyone's turning a blind eye to the fact that this underdeveloped country is impacted by COVID because they're just not collecting data on all the deaths. And not just collecting the data, but tracking the data and sharing the data. And so we all as society need to do more to track data, monitor data, enforce action, and really figure out like what countries are being impacted today and do something today because we have the vaccines. We need to do more. And the reason why we don't hear or know about these issues is because Certain countries just don't monitor and track the deaths as much as other countries do. Transparent communication is super important. It should be shared publicly. Um, by withholding information, 
that's dishonest and you're not helping society. We need to have transparent information sharing for the best outcomes. An informed society can be a better leader and, and really lead better outcomes as well. Early implementation of contact tracing, quarantine actions, and travel restrictions is super important. Definitely buy time for healthcare workers to deploy, mobilize, and provide care. Buying more time for healthcare workers to deploy, mobilize, and provide care is critical because in the early stages of a disease outbreak, it is vital to increase our healthcare facilities and our capacity to provide care, such as distributing personnel, hospital beds, ventilators, vaccines, medication, medications, personal protective equipment to all our healthcare facilities, but also distribute these resources throughout each nation. Actions to recruit and train healthcare workers should be done proactively in advance and just ongoingly in general. We should implement these actions early. Courses should be available online, remote work to train individuals should be enhanced, and bonuses should be provided for volunteers to become certified and enhance their qualifications in these areas. Medical training is super important. Training and recruitment takes time and we need to really build our facilities now, today, proactively and not build these facilities six months after we figured out there's a pandemic. Grow healthcare industry early, maintain the industry, and implement volunteers. In the military, we have this thing called reservists. They are available when necessary. Well, we need all countries to implement a reserve program of volunteer individuals who are ready to deploy when there is an increase in need. With COVID-19, we should have reserve medical individuals who are available, qualified, certified, and trained and they receive some kind of stipend for being on a list and available to deploy at any time. With COVID-19, our healthcare industry and personnel were spread very thin. Nationwide facilities and personnel should be maintained and available on call for times of heightened risk. With initial recognition of health and safety risks, starting within a nation, action should definitely grow the healthcare industry early maintain the industry and implement volunteers to best address the needs of the nation in a potential public health crisis. Governments should increase funding for research and development of vaccines and treatments, expand the distribution of supplies and resources, expand healthcare access to all individuals and enhance volunteer efforts, but also improve community services that are available in times of need. We should manage results and prolong life to allow bodies more time to fight. For any illness, one should minimize their viral load or the quantity of germs inside the body in order to allow your body more time to fight and overcome the issue. Reduce how overwhelmed your body becomes by the virus. One can do this by maintaining exemplary hygiene actions like showering upon coming home, washing off your vegetables before you eat them and uh, waking up or sleeping regularly but also showering prior to doing so. You'll want to rinse your eyes with eye drops, keep them clean, wash your hands, clean out your nose contents because as a human being when you're excreting something as a biologist um, probably because it's bad for your body so allow your body to excrete these germs and get rid of your nose contents, you know, allow yourself to go to the bathroom. It's a good thing. <laughs> wear your masks, wear your gloves, do prevention, sterilize your house with alcohol-based products that are good for uh, preventing COVID-19 and killing the COVID-19 strain. The best prevention can also mean early detection. So be aware of potential symptoms and get tested early and often, ideally from the comfort of your home. We all should simply do our best. We should fight with intensity and we should each day, each day we live on, the better the chances of your survival statistically. And so be sure to do all you can and consult with your medical professionals to maintain and manage the best results. Improve your capacity to gain better outcomes.
consult with a professional medical provider about hospice care or other programs available to you. Uh, you can improve modern medicine. Uh, definitely it is an important thing we need to do in society and in the world. And society should strive to evolve modern medicine specifically. Advanced testing, advanced treatment, advanced medicine, vaccines, boosters, technology, facilities, medicinal treatment, medicinal research medical education programs, and foster collaboration and partnerships that really improve our actions during these times of need. Government and organizational transparency about death, supplies, and scientific research is super important. And this transparency and accountability is very critical um, toward effectively fostering an improved healthcare system throughout each nation. For the SARS-CoV 2003 outbreak of pneumonia, and high fever related symptoms, the Chinese government ineffectively took action and they withheld information during this outbreak. This led to an increase in deaths and it was both national and internationally. Travel restrictions were not implemented fast enough by China and quarantine, travel bans, and treatments were not implemented quick enough. Improving outcomes through transparency and information Information sharing is super important, but also required. It is something we must do. We all can take more informed decisions and actions when we have more research and the information is transparently provided to us. When we are aware of the quantity of actual deaths, we are more apt to take sufficient actions to reduce and prevent these deaths. Society should be aware in times of health issues there will always be a lag or delay of data and research. This is why it is very important for society to take action early. The data may simply be worse than we think, simply because data sharing takes time. The data we receive today will always be based on old data. The question is only, how old is this data? When society is informed, society can do more effectively they can compile supplies and research and achieve the best outcomes. By being informed, we can mitigate medicinal errors and or unsubstantiated actions taken in effort to help situations. This is why we must always vet information and assess the pros and cons to all your choices prior to making this action. Data tracking and sharing and monitoring is super important. We need to collect and analyze data, it's essential. We need to understand and combat public health issues through improved data tracking, sharing, and monitoring. Agencies should track the spread of diseases, identify outbreaks early, and evaluate the effectiveness of actions. While individual privacy is important, it is more important we learn from the lives of others, learn from the mistakes of others, and learn from the outcomes of others. We simply must identify this information as being specific to Jane Doe. But in reality, collecting that data is important because it gives us information about what actions are best to do. And so that is kind of why I created this Level Up channel is so I can really help you all level up within your life, improve your outcomes. And the only way to do so is by sharing information, growing and learning and implementing actions to really improve your life in every aspect you can. So this content is definitely information sharing, it's transparency, it's and it's important. True numbers of those infected should be accurately reported to society and allow improved prevention and response actions by each individual. We need to implement travel bans and restrictions early on. Restrictions and travel bans slow the spread of diseases in our travel industry by reducing exposure to those infected. Thus, we should implement them early and enforce them ongoingly during high-risk times. Implement at-home care testing. Testing allows us to improve our response measures taken, and when we implement testing from home, we avoid overwhelming our medical providers at our facilities while also reducing exposure to new spread of the diseases to ourselves from others, vice versa. The accuracy of at-home testing and effectiveness of home care should be important for any endemic epidemic.
Definitely enforce vaccinations and boosters to those most sensitive is vital. Vaccinations are pretty effective at preventing the spread of diseases and improving outcomes for those infected. And boosters help your body maintain your immunity and antibodies that help you fight the disease. It is important that you get vaccinated to reduce the spread of COVID-19, but also vaccinate to mitigate deaths that are still occurring today globally by COVID and other diseases. Deaths that still occur today. So I definitely did complete a, so I did post a video about COVID-19. I did post several other videos about COVID-19 pandemic. Uh, definitely look into uh, searching my videos for the pandemic retrospective COVID-19 videos that I've posted. Definitely pulled some references from Nebula TV, see my Medium article for the citations, and also I did find some content from CDC.gov, World Health Organization, and Survivor Corp's Facebook page group, as well as some scientific journals like sciencemagazine.org. Subscribe below. Uh, we're definitely focused here on leveling up your life and the lives of others around you. So definitely subscribe and comment below if you have any thoughts about this issue. Obviously, it's a super important topic, super complex topic, and this content is meant to just simply inform and share information and research and data. I did a lot of research and I just want to share it with you, and I hope you enjoyed it and maybe pulled something from it. Thank you so much, and I'll see you all soon. Within initial... Oh my god, it's so hot. Oh my god, this is so bad.